So Gary, two vacuum pumps here for probably obvious reasons, 72 units. Yeah, uh, ironically one will run it, but we wanted to have, if, if again because we're milking such a large number of cows, everyone's about redundancy. So one will actually run and, and milk them perfectly fine. So we run them both together so that one's not taking more load than the other. Um, and then if something did happen, we can switch over. To date, there hasn't been, but that's, that's the redundancy. The same what you can see in this corner with air compressors. I said, because everything on the Bomatic, as far as the shutoffs, the air rams, or the ACRs are all compressed air. Yeah. Um, we have two compressors for doing that. One's a scroll and one's just a backup compressor then. And you, you have an air dryer again? Everything's air dried through. Yeah. That, that actual, that actual scroll, scroll compressor has um, air dryer, a moisture trap, everything built into it. Okay. This is your control box then for your floor? Yep. So control box is in here, as I said, out of the way. Keep it uh, tidy. So we'll have the handy floor. Then we have the feeder, the main control panel, and then the backing gate as well. Yeah. And I see a generator. Uh, yeah, this generator is actually obsolete now with them um, with what they're doing here So on the outside there's actually a new silent generator being set outside and now they're going to be powering more just with Growing it's just it was easier to put the generator outside than try to bring in a new one into here Yeah, and that's a backup for power more so than the mains is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. just backup for okay. power. Yeah, yeah, so access to your Yes, so with your underground or into your internals yeah. of the rotaries here. Yeah, so again, very, very much a, an American concept as far as they want. They want it clean from a clean room right through. Um, so with doing that, you have to put in a, a, what we would count a deep tunnel. So you have to go right down underneath the rotary to come back up again. Um, same with uh, you can, the good thing is about that. Instead of having to do a service tunnel for your vacuum lines and everything, yeah. we can run everything through it. Yes. What size pipe? Six inch, six inch supply. All our all our rotaries are six inch supplies. Um, simply just to vacuum reserve and balance everything out. <coughs> right. Let's have a look. So what we what we have here. So again, we have clutch now. <laughs> this actually is cluster flush, which he doesn't use. Yeah. He, he has it as a backup. He said if we ever got a spike in the status. He says I can switch it on, but he's seeing it as a fail safe. He doesn't want it to become relied upon. It's just there. If something got into the herd, they can switch it on and run with, was run that, with it and turn it off. Was that put in day one? Day one. Okay. Um, then obviously the milk meter, the compressed air, and then the airbag system and the rollers. Yeah. For it. So, so how many airbag systems are on this? There's three, so six drive motors and three airbags at okay. each, 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 thir each third of the rotary. Okay. Okay. So at six locations, you have drive units? Uh, three, loca three. three locations, yeah. two drive units on each location. Yes, okay. And yeah. then twin receivers and the, obviously the nylon wheels and yeah. everything there. All, all very easily accessible here height-wise in terms of service. Yeah. 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 This your uh, drainage from your, with your... Yeah, so that's the, that's the center one where in Maloney's it would be slightly different that it was a, it would run through the rotary and back to the outside. Yeah. But the, the say is the drains on the inside. Okay. A large central pillar then here. Is that structural or is it, is this? So with this, um, with the center pillar, um, everything's tied together. So we don't need, we don't need rollers running H beams to make them center. Basically, the center structure here holds it together. So you can see these are these are large and bolted on; they don't float. And basically, there that lattice structure holds the rotary central, and yeah. then the rollers then on the railway track around. So we don't use an H beam for the rollers to go around. It's an actual uh, a railway track, and then on the top of it's a double I beam that sits on top of the rollers. Right. What type of roller are they? They're a nylon roller. You're t talking basically two rollers per, per stall. And uh, we're just doing a rough calculation on this rotary. We reckon this rotary has turned, has covered 14,000 kilometers since it's went in. And to date, we've never changed the roller, nylon or drive, drive roller as well. Is there a greasing requirement on it? There's greasing requirements on the central, on the central pivot, just on this plate. And then on the each drive motor, it's only for the bearing basically, but there's not, you don't have to oil the track around it. It's not about oil, it's just about just for things clamping onto the track that to keep it lubricated. The gland any, here then say it's a key component of any rotary. What's, what's going on there? Is there any additional functionality? So there's a couple of things that is a, what we do differently with a central gland. So our central gland is actually modular. It's not one gland that does everything as far as vacuum, electrical and, and milk. So 
one, it's very easy if you have to change the seal on it that you don't have to split the whole gland and it keeps the cost down dramatically. So uh, the top one is obviously your milk swivel um, that goes up, but it's all two and a half inch lines out. The central one is your electrical swivel and then this one is your vacuum swivel. Um, going right up through, you'll see some additional features with uh, the cluster flush. Um, there's cluster flush put on this rotary um, only for if there was a spike in mastitis or there was something got into the herd that they could turn it on. So what a lot of people do is put in a cluster flush to try to solve a problem. They want it there as instead of if they have a problem, they can use it for a certain period of time and then switch it off again. So it's not, it's not acting like a sticky plaster on a bigger problem. Yes. Gary, just on the milk as it leaves here, it, the milk is not going through the gland here as such. It's no. going through a simple... It's going so through. It's going through its own. It's going through its own milk swivel as such. So nothing. Milk doesn't touch the gland. It doesn't go through any of the electrical parts or the vacuum parts. It's a totally separate unit. Um, we have two receivers here with two two horsepower milk pumps, and they pump it together. It comes to this Y, and then comes up and over, and it actually goes into a reception jar. It doesn't actually go directly to the bulk tank. Um, the reason for that is whenever we get up to the reception jar, basically we can pump the milk nice and slow through the plate cooler for direct cooling into the bulk tank then and we have other jobs for it up there too for going into a pasteurizing system for the calves as well so okay. it's really to allow total flexibility what we do with the milk once we get it out of the cow. Right yeah because I suppose 99% of cases it's going straight to the plate cooler from here at whatever speed. Yeah 99% yeah. of cases as a, normally it would be on a 50 stall for instance it would be one receiver a variable speed drive and it's pumped nice and slowly right through here into the milk tank or the silo yeah just in terms of the milk line here before we leave the center uh you have two receiving jars you said and two milk pumps are our specific units always going to the same or can the milk go in any direction so the milk can technically go in any direction like they're not closed off from one way to the other but if you notice in the milk line you have a rise and fall so you have a rise at that point and a rise at that point so the milk should flow from these meters into this receiving jar and from this this way down into this receiving jar yeah um yeah, if for instance, again, like if for instance a milk set of milk pump seals went down, you could in theory milk with one. It, would, it wouldn't be as good as for vacuum reserve because you're in effect flooding the line with milk to get it to go to the other side, but you, it would get you through a milk and as right. such. Okay. Harry, we're following the route of the, the milk now, so it's come out of the, the top of the gland, say. It's come over here in the stainless pipe. Can you take it from there? Yep. So milk comes across and it comes into this reception jar here it holds about 1100 litres of milk and uh, what actually happens is the reason for that is is that whenever we go to a direct filling of lorries we have to pump the milk super slow through the plate cooler um, and the plate cooler will be glycol chilled then so basically the milk from the cow over 30 degrees will be cooled at this point down to below four and then get directly loaded into the directly loaded into the milk tanker um, at present it's not, it's just normal borehole, but we're getting consistently, you know, two degrees, whatever the water is, two degrees higher than it through the plate cooler, one to one system. But as we follow here, basically, with the system, it's a variable speed from Bomatic, it's called OptiFlow CF. So there is an actual float the full length of this tank. So as it lifts up, it pumps, it starts to pump faster and faster, typically with a variable speed. It has two, maybe three stages in it, so when it gets to the point it lifts to a different speed. This will actually gain speed continuously the whole way up. So we want obviously to pump the milk as slow as we can through the two milk socks. So these milk socks, the system's good for a thousand cows. If they need to change the milk sock during milking, they can do it at, at, on the go. So they can shut off one side, yes. pull the filter out, replace it, um, close it back in again. Through the coming up then around here, uh, which is totally different and unique to this farm. We have another set of valves and what they are for is actually, we have two automatic pasteurizers for the calves. So the operator on the other side uh, can hit a button and it'll pump the milk from here into the pasteurizers nice and slowly. And it's not, it's passing through the milk filters, but it's not passing through the plate cooler. So you're keeping the colostrum and you're keeping the, the milk warm for the going into the cow, keeping all the good stuff going right. for the calves. Yeah. So what's this device here? Is that a that's just a water filter again yeah. for for the water being pumped over at that other those two large tanks the water comes through here through the filter through the plate cooler and then loops back again 
It's protecting the filter ultimately here, the, the milk filter as such, is it? It's protecting the veins of it? or it, It's it's basically, yeah, the plate cooler, it, it doesn't allow any dirt through the yeah. plate cooler then. Okay. Um, as I said, it's quite a large, you know, everything here, you know, it, it's all based on scales. So, you know, we have a lot a lot of water um, going through it and it's just better to have a filter right beside it. Your filters again are at an angle for ease of operation. Ease of operation, easy to pull them out, you're not pulling them out high. And then also as well, it, it, whenever we have the valves there, we're not losing any milk whenever we are pulling them out. Right. I suppose a big part of the co-preparation is using clots. That's something we've seen in, I suppose, in the couple of days we've been over here in Scotland. Yeah, a lot, on that. Yeah, a lot of a, a, a lot of people just to clean the cows use cloths. They're cost effective. Um, it does a good job of cleaning, but we basically have three washing machines and dryers here, three shifts. So you know that they know they can. And I know it's going to sound funny. There's traceability on what cloths are milked in the morning, to the afternoon, to the evening. So if a set of cloths are starting to become past their sell by date, they know they have to replace that batch of cloths. Um, with it, there is a chemical that gets dosed onto it as well for the cleaning, and also then they, it dries the cloth as well, so that you're not you're not putting on a wet, a damp cloth under the cow's teeth. It's actually a dry cloth. Yeah. So if the cloth gets used once and it's washed. Is that fair to say? That's correct. Yeah. 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 So on a farm like this, how many milk tanks are here? One. There's this one is a thirty-five thousand liter tank, and they have an, another smaller tank, um, and then they have uh, usually a lorry for direct loading as well. Now they can't at present direct load as far as a, they don't have a chiller system in, but yeah. everything's been prepped for that. So at the moment there's two Arctic loads of milk goes out of the farm per day, um, and it's actually slightly over that. Um, so basically the smaller tanks is a reserve tank for that. Okay, it's a Mueller tank. Yeah, Mueller, Mueller tank, good tank, like it's yeah. been, been in from day one as well. Uh, you can see from the pipe configuration here that we can, obviously the bottom fill valve is on the, is on the line, not in the tank, yeah. so we can move it over till the two different tanks. Okay, and what's the cooling method? Cooling. Direct expansion tank or? Direct expansion tank, yeah. yeah. Okay, and what's this device here? That is the pump for pumping it directly into the, a, into the load into the milk tank so the milk yeah. tank gets parked up here and it's up to the customer to pump the milk into the tank so basically the the collection just lifts the tank and goes and they don't have to worry about pumping the milk yeah this was gary the the, the mill tank here and its location it's away from where the operators are yeah you have a couple of fail safe solutions in place yeah so obviously we still have to drain the unit uh, after after it's washed um, but basically every hand valve or valve as such, automatic valve, has a set of sensors on it. So on this part, are, there's six drain points. Every single one of them has a sensor to say whether they're open or closed. So if there's any of them that are open at the wrong time, basically it sends off an alarm round the, round the rope tray to say that you know, th your system is not totally closed. Um, it's not, a, it's not a, a feature that any rope tree has it's something that was added on to the rotary after after by the customer he wanted us to come up with a solution for it so yeah. we have a custom plc doing it if you have it just maybe point out so what's what's happening here yeah so this one is a this 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 valve here is a contactless one it's looking at for steel there for washing that's a standard one goes back to the plant washer what's different is is here you can see that there's a, a flag and a sensor on this hand valve so if we were in milk and this hand valve was open it would basically send off an alarm around the rotary that there's a hand valve open on the there's a hand valve open at this location. Yeah, it's preventing a loss of a lot of milk potentially. Loss of a lot of milk. Um, I remember the first time that uh, there was a there was an error with this. There was one rotation of cows and it was close to a thousand liters of milk. Yeah. So like you know it doesn't you don't it doesn't be long to lose a lot of milk very quickly. Yes.